Here we go. I recently attended another funeral. Seems like people are just dropping like flies around me. For whatever reason, it seems life has forced me to confront the inevitability of death and impermanence. Life is so incredibly short. It's ridiculously short. I was recently scrolling through meetup groups on the uh, meetup app, and one of them was uh, a discussion group, and the title of the discussion was Can Thinking About Death Improve Your Quality of Life? I'm here to say from experience that it certainly can. I am just now, at this stage in my life, this late in my life, starting to cross over into a life worth living. I should back up. I'm coming from a wasted life into a an aware life. Whatever you want to call the place I came from in life, it's a foolish place. It's a uh, short-sighted place. It is a life of immaturity uh, and cowardice, perhaps. Uh, the fear of not confronting reality. And what is this reality that I'm speaking of? What sorts of realizations, thoughts, epiphanies elicit a life worth living? One could summarize it by saying it is the embrace of impermanence. Life is change. Life is change. Shortly after my mom died, my best friend died. And shortly after that, I was standing at work one day when a man came up to me and said, Are you Jonathan Davis? I said, Yes. He said, Your brother was found dead this morning. Well, I wanted to die too. I started crossing things off my bucket list. I traveled the world, I joined the army, I learned a second language, I learned to play a song on the guitar. All things I had been meaning to do. Been to war a few times. I didn't see active combat every time, but anyway, right now I'm listening to this book, uh, The Wager. It's about a crew of men who shipwreck and get stuck someplace. The fleet of ships started out with some thousands of people and ended up with uh, very few. They just kept dying left and right. It's weird because they have a little backstory on all of them. You start to feel like you're getting to know them and then they drop dead. So what's the point I'm trying to make? We are here today and gone tomorrow. Life is ridiculously fragile and short. The more you read history, the more you understand this. And even if you hold an old photograph in your hand or a newspaper clipping with a group of people, it can be interesting to look on those faces and realize that every single one in that photograph is gone. And all of them had a life and an ego. We all like to think that we're special in some way or that the rapture is going to come and scoop us up before we die or or even that we'll escape death by uh, living forever in heaven or you fill in the blank. I still have the last text message that I sent my brother. It says, no, I'm too busy. He had messaged me earlier asking me if I want to watch the birds game, meaning the eagles game meaning football. I was always too busy, too busy to do anything with anyone, ever. That was maybe 10 years ago. Ask me what it was that was so important that I had to do that day. I don't know. I have no idea. But I probably thought it was some big thing that was going to improve my life. My friends, we are here today and gone tomorrow. It's silly to think that I ever wanted to in my life early. All of us only have a few hours anyway. So what would be the point? I'd like to read for you a quote. It is one I read recently in front of an audience. Many of us do most of what we do in spite of the fact that we will eventually die. In this sense, life is a distraction from the reality of death. We live, as Ernest Becker wrote, in a state of death denial. After all, we are in a strange situation. We're all going to die just as surely as if we had already fallen from a cliff. We just do our best to ignore the feeling of weightlessness and the roar of wind in our ears. In the meantime, whatever ordinary happiness we've achieved seems somehow diminished when we consider the fact that our lives in this world will come to an end. But there is a way to turn this logic around. We can begin to do things not in spite of death, but because of it. 
more and more we can lean into the truth of impermanence, and rather than make us morbid, it can make us appreciate people. You are alive. You get to make full contact with life now. Everyone you've ever met, every person you'll ever see out in the world today, friend or stranger, everyone is bound to lose all that they love in this world. We share this common circumstance. Nothing lasts. And yet it falls to us to make this dream as beautiful as we can make it. Why would we want to be anything but kind to one another while it lasts? So do you hate taking out the trash? Well, sooner than you think, going down the three steps outside your front door will be a task too difficult for you to manage. And you'll have to pay someone to do that for you. Let me encourage you to embrace impermanence so that you can start living. It's incredibly evil to live one's life with the idea that the next life is the real life because it hurts not just you, but the people around you. The difference between bad and evil is that bad hurts you, whereas evil is when you are conscious of the fact that your actions are hurting other people and you don't care. You can't possibly appreciate others to the extent to which they deserve and lack an understanding for the temporary nature of things. Why would I have hung out with my brother? Why would I squeeze every drop of love out of life? We're all going to heaven where we'll live forever. Christians often say, if I'm wrong, no big deal. What do I lose? No, that's wrong. Because when you make that bet, you lose everything and everyone. If you're wrong and all you have is life and you've wasted a second of it, you have robbed yourself and the people who love you. If life is everything and you lose it, you lose everything. And how much of your focus on the afterlife is a subconscious effort to avoid uncomfortable thoughts? Christian or not, heaven or not, you can love. You can stop avoiding the thoughts of impermanence. And if you don't believe in anything, but are searching for a reason to live, or are searching for your purpose in life, or are struggling to find gratitude. Well, how's this? You can breathe air. You can tell someone you love them. And some of you just may be able to go outside and go for a walk, but you will not always be able to do those things. So you'd better hurry up. Time is running out.